Slip it off. We can't talk about it. I already had something and they said we weren't allowed to do anything, so you have to talk to P before we can. P. Ferris Thomas wants to come on. He's doing a tour, or he, no, he has a new record label. Record label. Yeah. Yeah. Just a minute. Um, when? Friday. Okay. Um, turn those headphones down for me, would you? Uh, dates, huh? I told Todd I couldn't come, and I asked him to send me a, a login number. Yep, she was one of thousand yesterday. Chicago. Um, Today is the 22nd, so you know. Atlanta. Want to no. We starting now? Yeah. Huh? He actually wanted to do tomorrow at 8 and not Friday. But I told him I had to check with you because I don't know how you get okay. to Let me see what I can talk to these people about this morning. I don't know. Come on, Sonia. <laughs> Come on, Sonia. Twins, twins, hi. I got to do my hair first, guys. Oh, I well, see. You got to kind of be like me. I can't Put a scarf on at night, you guys. And Ooh, then... but my skin looks good, though. But it does. So listen up. Um, Mains had to step out for a moment. Good morning to you. Um, glad to be here this morning. Yeah. With my twin. Come on, twin. Come on over here. Today is a lot easier, guys. It's been it rough. Is. Yeah, because when you walk in the door, you still expect to see him. Expect to see Wayne. You know, Courtney Scott, if you all remember Courtney Scott, she used to um, produce for Matt and Cliff. And Courtney Scott has a uh, um, video with her and 
um, Wayne singing. So I replayed <laughs> that over and over and over because it's like so unbelievable. A person that you see every day, all day, every day, all day, and you don't see him the next morning. It's, it's, it's surreal. It's surreal. You know, my parents are gone. It's kind of funny because I didn't live with them, right, when I became a grown woman, so I didn't see them every day. And the pit of my stomach for Wayne is it's, it's just something, it just hurts. Like, I don't want to bring you all down this morning, like really, but the show is going to be off the chain this morning. Um, stay tuned for a great show as usual. You all know how um, May is getting in. Uh, it gives you all the information that you need. Of course, share the broadcast. Share, share, share. Hi, Teresa. Good morning, Tiger. <laughs> it is great to sit here in this seat. One of these days, you all want to hear my voice permanently. I will be a host. I'm just talking. Look at all of you all just tuning in. That is so wonderful. So, any hoot, um, we're going to start this broadcast ASAP. Hey, I can, I can tell you all, if you all have any suggestions sometimes, I think you all should send me some suggestions. Um, Sonia at WVON.com, you know, some stories. You know, we're family, so we can all do this together, okay? Hi, Mufasa, Ma. How come I can't say your name? Annette, come here. Uh-oh. Had to drive by. What you doing, I'm on live with Facebook. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see. I think Annette's gonna say hi to you all really quick. Up, oh, oh, she can't. Here's Maze. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Man. Take a moment. Share the broadcast. What up, Frank? What up, Sheila? What up, Gary Terry? That's YouTubers. Man, in the West Loop, it's everybody almost don't accept cash. They just passed a law in San Francisco that says you have to. I said, in the West Loop, almost all the stores that are opening up are that way. Really? No cash. Um, but they just passed a law in San Francisco saying that... Um, they passed a law in San Francisco saying that that's no longer legal. You have to have accept cash. Think about that though. If they don't accept cash, you have to pay interest on whatever you buy. But on top of that, think about if you're homeless and you spend the whole day and you finally save up enough to go get something to eat and now you can't eat because you don't have a car. All right, so now guess what they gonna be doing? Hey, let me give you this cash. Right. <laughs> you go in there and buy me something yep. with your credit card. Right? But who gonna take pennies and nickels and dirt exactly. and that's, that's true. That's true. And they gonna stand on them corners, begging for money for what? Now you gonna have to walk around with ATM cards. What the bucket boy is gonna do? Do you want the bucket boys in the show? No. <laughs> for what? For what? What are you doing to me? Uh, uh, that, then put them on the Urban Business Roundtable. Cause I, no, I don't want the bucket yeah, okay. boys. Them, I, I hate, I hate having my car and pulling up at a light. They be like, like I owe them. You know what? They don't do what they used to. They used to really perform. Now they only perform toward the light. So when the light turn red, they kind of, when the light turn green, they gone. And you like, oh, you all used to do a whole little thing. Now you just nah, the real bucket boys done blew up. They at the bulls. Everything else is not. Two degrees here. The bucket boys like the bulls. 
Ben still got here late. <laughs> Look, he went and got a haircut and everything, y'all. Look at him. He getting back in the mix. Look at him. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Look at that. I was just talking about that last night. Saying that if we get some air conditioning in here. I would start wearing, dressing again for the morning show. Like, seeing as we do it like this and it looks like it's on TV, might as well just go ahead and give them the whole thing. I'm back on Fox, y'all. I'll be back Thursday. What up, Kang? What up, Deborah? What up, Desmo? What up, Sonia? What up, Hassan Alameen? What up, Tiger Lily? What up, Carmen A. Coburn? What up, Rod Crowder? What up, Deborah Roberts? What up, Tiger Lily? What up, Verdella Walker? What up, Deborah Roberts? What up, Sarah Ware? What up, Quasi Amoa? Tell Sonya I want to see if she can come in here on this TV and move it to um, Facebook and check in on the WVON page and we can watch the WVON page up here. And then I can see the comments. So when you get a second, come in with the remote. It just takes too many times to go blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Well, um. Wake up, Chicago. Wake up, work. Hold on. Let me do that again. <clears throat> I felt like the Brady Bunch, uh, the Brady Bunch issue when he was like, "You've got to rearrange." Wake up, Chicago. Wake up, world. This is the WVON Morning Show. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Hey, man, that was my changing voice. You think that could be it, y'all? Do you think my voice could finally be changing? You're Peter Brady. <laughs> I could finally get a change in voice. Maybe I'll get some bass. In my voice. Uh, this is the WVO Morning Show. Gotta say what's up to the team. What's up, Ty Stroger? Man, you all dressed up today. What's going on, man? It's the city council today. I'm going to go to the city council and hobnob. You're going to go to city council and hobnob? Yeah. Are you going to shake some hands? Are you going to go in the chambers? You, you all good? What you doing, man? Yeah, I'm going to go in the chambers. That's good stuff. Do you get, like, privilege, automatic privilege? Right. I, I have floor rights. So you got floor. I can walk around on the floor and... You gonna do all that, man? Look, y'all, we gotta get talk. Can we get you on Facebook Live? Can you do a Facebook Live? Can you be like selfies with everybody and be like, hey, y'all, and then go be. This is supposed to be some decorum, though. That's what you got the tie on for, man. Look, man. Oh, now I'm gonna tell you. Check this out. This uh, that, But you know what? I'm gonna tell you what. When was the last time you've been back in the chambers? Uh, a couple of months. Okay. I want to say, think about how fun that would be, though. That would be great. Like, Todd Stroger, like a Facebook Live event, and Todd Stroger, and we follow him. See, that's a show. And then you go in, and you talk to people, and you you know what? Yeah, that's like taking advantage of your, your privilege. Uh, hey, Todd, if anybody should take advantage of their privilege after all these years, it should be. Look, man, let me tell you something, dog. You gonna stop walking around here like you, like they these people don't owe you. You better pay my man his money, give him his props, and if you get a reality show out of this, so be it. <laughs> Ain't nobody you gonna be the t right. You gonna have a Todd Stroger returns to the fold reality show. I'm gonna tell you to be off the chain. Look, y'all already mm -hmm. got carried away. Let's get started. Let's tell you what's up to the uh, Annette Fournoy in the newsroom. Annette, how you feeling this morning? Would you wear um, O.J. Simpson's number if um, you could? There's a football player who is taking a number out of retirement, and he's going to wear it. 
I wouldn't because OJ was just too too good, and I think that uh, that's that's how they do it in the league. When you are great, they don't wear your number anymore. So I wouldn't wear it. You know what? I would want to wear it like when I go to the whitest of white towns. <laughs> so like, if I was in if I was in Boston, if I was in Boston, like if I was a New England I Patriot, right? I'd be like, right, right. I would be like, yeah, give me OJ's number. Like you know, I want to be. I want OJ's number in a place like Alabama. Well, this guy, he's a Buffalo Bills player. Uh, oh, who is it? What's his name? Uh, uh, Sonoris Perry. Oh, I, I know Sonoris Perry. Uh, that's funny, though, that he would... See, I'm, I think it's Senior Reese. Is it Sonoris or is it Senior Reese? Uh, but I, you know what I do think is funny is that what that tells me is that this is another example of, like, millennials or whoever they are, I don't know what group, and it's like they don't know like all the history behind it. So all you did is saw the ESPN special, didn't think about all the murder stuff, and it's like, I'm just taking that running. Right. Like all things are forgiven. You know, remember that guy Richie Incognito that was going around bullying and he was calling everybody Negroes and all type of stuff and said, I'm making you tougher. He's back in the league, right? It's like, when it comes to, a, you you know what? So, the films would have to approve that, right? Obviously. I, Oh yes. Oh yeah. The Bulls. The Bills would have to approve that. Yeah. Think about that though. He's bring. Is he? Does he have the numbers to do it? I don't think he does. Not yet. All right. Not well, yet. you know what, Annette? That's a good story. I'm gonna have to follow that. Um, because you know, white folks everywhere will be booing him to death. Uh, and I think it'd be like, you know, that'd be fun. It'd be like the new. He wants to be the new Colin Kaepernick. He picked a different. He gonna divide y'all black. <laughs> well, shoot. Now nah, you gonna see white folks for real. You gonna see. You know the Kaepernick thing kind of divided. I'm gonna Google who he's dating. Ooh, you already know the answer to that. Look, do you see how the sisters do it? The sisters ready. Uh, right, cause you know what? We gonna talk about old boy. We, you know what? At at seven thirty, we gonna talk about this. Cause I wanted to talk about it yesterday. Did you uh see? You remember old boy Robert Smith? Who gave all the students, who paid all the student oh, yeah. loans. Rubbish. You know, well, guess what? He divorced his black wife of multiple years and married a white girl. And the sisters was like, bust your stupid $40 million in scholarships that you paid for student loans. Did he marry a white woman? I like, this is a class of 29 people. Oh, yeah, look. You. <laughs> Sisters, 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 sisters ain't, look, they don't I mean, stick together. Has a type, I get it. I'm the check. Man, you know what, that is, you know what I do want to find out, though, what, what, we're going to talk about that one day, but let me do this. Let me say what's up to the rest of the WBOA Morning Show team. Got to say what's up to the Wonder Twins, Sonya Escobar and Sonya Tompkins. How you ladies doing this morning? Good morning. Doing wonderful, yeah. wonderful. We had a chance to talk to the uh, Facebook family. Oh, yeah, I was talking to the Facebook fam. What's up to everybody on Facebook and YouTube? You all want to let you know if you want to see what's going on behind the scenes, you can definitely go to the WVON Facebook page. You can go to the Maze Jackson Facebook page. Uh, and you can like the page. Do us a favor, like the page. Like us on Instagram. You can go to WVON 1690 on Instagram or like me too. Todd, you got Instagram? See, this one you should put your Instagram See, see, man, you better, you want to get with it, man. You got to get with it. All right, it is the WVON Morning Show. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Sonia, uh, Sonia, let's get this thing to 50,000 feet. The soul plane is up in the air. And Todd, you have said it already. Today is the first day of Mayor Lightfoot's first city council. Mm -hmm. um, do you expect any fireworks today? Nah, nah. Who, I don't, well, you know what? I'll say who has been speaking a lot is, uh, is uh, Ray Lopez. He's been not very happy. Ray Lopez, I'm going to tell you that Ray Lopez has clearly, it seems like he has been on every show. He goes on every show with his script because he got a script. Like, he go on every show, he put the papers down, and he'd be like, what was that question? <laughs> like, I got an answer, got an answer for that. And and so he goes down the list and gets his papers, and he reads his answers. But I, I don't know if right now he is so so to me he's a, he is really Ed Burke's spokesman right now right Ed Burke can't really talk but he is not probably very happy and uh, Ray Lopez did not seem to take a page, a page out of did not seem to learn from what happened to Anthony Beal now here's was, the deal that was definitely a message that right now now check this out though Ray Lopez may not need to be 
uh, to say may not need the mayor because he may be the beneficiary of Ed Burke's $19 million campaign fund. And so Ed Burke may be showing him how to navigate around and say, look, man, I got you. You just got to keep on twisting the knife twisting the knife and keep on needling that. But I don't know how that works out for his ward. You know what I mean? Well, you know, there's still people in in the system who are friends of Ed Burke. Right. So, I mean, it may not be the director, but there's somebody who actually, you know, does the work. And, and, and you know what? Usually, see, the smartest guys usually got a workaround in every, in every, every department. So they don't have to go to the department head. They just need to get to the person. Right? Like I used to tell y'all, like the Latinos, when when HDO was running stuff, what they would do is put their people in the purchasing a low a spot that you really didn't pay attention to, but it was the purchasing. And they would know where all the contracts were, all the money, and then when it was time to sign off, they would get a wink and a nod and be like, okay, you got it. And I think that Ed Burke has that network in the city. Yeah. After all the people that have worked for him, that he has put their families through college. And so I think that we're going to see Ray Lopez serve as the leader of the opposition. Because uh, it seemed like Anthony Bill didn't seem like he was really trying to stir it up too much after after being summarily dismissed. No, I got kind of quiet. We'll, <laughs> we'll see what happens today because you know, you know they're going to run to him. Yep, yep, they will be running to him. Oh, yeah, they're going to bring all of them. But I think the quotes... I think the best quotes are going to be coming from Ray Lopez, but he may be doing his constituents a disservice. Look, we're going to talk about it all the more when we come back. It's Tough Chicago, 1690 AM, Maze Jackson, Todd Stroger. More of the morning show. Okay. So you need, you need to... What I want you to do is go to this. This is a smart TV. So you can go right here and enter Facebook. Like go to Facebook.com, mm -hmm. put Facebook.com in and then sign in under WVON. Wait. Back. Now you might need for me to personally assist you sometimes when you do these things so we can Facebook live. What? So I can Facebook live. Oh, can we get out of different things? Oh, oh, oh. If you're not gonna do it yourself. Oh, can we? Let's see if it's a Facebook app. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Look at all that. It seems like they should have a Facebook up there. Right. They got YouTube. Man, boy, the search. Go search up there in the corner and just type in Facebook. That was your thing yesterday. Man, that was a really good, um, that, I need to say something about that. That was really good. You know how to do that? What Samsung account? Is this something we gotta get from BLM? Or can we just go on to it? Samsung. I'm guessing you have a, an Apple. Yeah. So here, let's go back and let's just go to the browser. Let's go to home. Well, I would say I'll do it during um, after break. I said we should create our own account. If okay. We can, you know, All right. Well, let's. We ain't gonna have no fit about it because it's here for us to do it. So we can create our own account and see what happens right quick if we just want to put in WVON. Let me figure it out. 
Cause I need you tonight. Oh, oh. You are tuned in to the Top of Chicago, 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mace Jackson. Got my co-host, Ty Stroger, in the building. And Ty, let me run through some of these headlines. Uh, you already mentioned you are going down to city council. Today is the first city council meeting. Uh, yesterday was Mayor Lori Lightfoot's first day. And it seems like the black people in power stayed intact, at least for now. Janice Jackson is staying. So is um, Eddie Johnson, Dorval Carter, Eugene Jones. Um, I did not see what they were doing with the Board of Education. Is Frank Clark going to stay there, you think? Oh, I think he will. You think he will? Yeah, I think he's got that kind of cash cake. Okay, K literally. Cash. <laughs> <Right>. Hey! <laughs> he's like, I got that cash. Hey, come over here! Um, I'm going to... Um, so, that'll be interesting. You see Rom rode off into the sunset, or actually he rode off not into the lake, but around the lake. He's doing a thousand mile bike ride around the lake as his first uh, thing after being the mayor. They filmed him. That's rich people's stuff. Right, yeah. I, you know, I've decided that after this, I'm going to just take a year off and travel the world. Like what? See, see, see what I'm talking about? That's that, that's that bull. But he also got two jobs. Check that out. Two jobs. While black people still ain't getting no jobs in Chicago, he got two. He is going to be uh, 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 editor at large at the uh, Atlantic, as well as I think we all knew this one was coming. ABC. He's gonna be a uh, 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 contributor right. at ABC, where his boy George Stephanopoulos. See, man, can I tell you what? That was like always what I hoped my path would be. The George you Stephanopoulos path. George Stephanopoulos? No, like go do politics, win some campaigns, and then go to have my own news show, etc. I got. Well, I guess that's kind of it, except it's just not on TV. Yeah. You know what? You know what? Thank God for the little things. You know what? And not even the little things, because it's the big things. You know, I was out the other day, Todd, and, like, the news people are, like, kind of like, you know, we're kind of like A-listers on the news tip. It was really weird. It was like all these news people were like, oh, my God, I watch your show. Oh, my God, your show is just, I mean, and it was like the guy. Really? Yeah, and it was just like, and I listened to your show, and, um, I was kind of like, really? Like, these are the white people. This doesn't really surprise me. Uh, they've always realized that information is power. And that's what we do. We give information. So they want to know what's going on. So they can have the power. That's right. We can't. They don't want to sneak it up on them. No. Right. They don't want to <laughs> sneak it up on them. All right. So uh, that is what's up. Hey, did you see your boy Father Flager is headed to the Holocaust Museum to atone for his Louis Farrakhan? Meeting. I, I think atone is not the right word, but probably to uh, smooth some. Well, yes, let them know that he is. I'm still is on the team. Anti-Semitic. Right. Well, I think that. Um, I just think that that's that's a luxury of white people. Like I can I can go over here. They ain't gonna let Louis Farrakhan come in that morning. Do you think? No, I, I read <laughs> the, the rabbi's opinion uh, in the newspaper, and no, I see no love for. See, my thing is, like, you know how I be? If I ain't welcome, you ain't welcome. That's how I see it. So, see, I think if if he, I think if, if, the, if Father Flager was standing in solidarity with Louis Farrakhan, then my thing would be like, if I can't go, you can't go. If he can't come, I can't come. Well, I think the, the message that Farrakhan says that he is giving, and Flager, I think, is, is uh, saying this, is that they are, he's not talking about the whole group. He's talking about some people who he thought were uh, trying to do bad things to our specific community. Kind of like how some people say the black people and the Negroes, except they use a <laughs> exactly. different word. Exactly, right, yeah. Why, why they laugh when they say it about us, but then get mad when he say it? I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Cause we, I mean, I'll say one thing. They've learned through the centuries that if, uh, you are not hypersensitive, some, one day somebody will come and, and kill all you and burn your town down. See? And so, so we learn that too, but we seem to forget. No, and we then, always be like... we think that we're all individuals. Right. And we don't need to be together. Right. They never forget that stuff. It was funny yesterday I was at this forum. Shout out to Chicago Realtors. 
a uh, big, big shout out to our guy, Chris Anderson, um, former young Democrat. He is the chief external, uh, the head external affairs person for the Chicago Realtors. He put on a panel and yesterday it was funny. The Latinos were start the Latino panelist. Doc, I can't, I got, I don't have a card, but she was, um, saying that Latinos are not a monolith. And I was like, mm, good, good. <laughs> Good. You're See, learning. Right. I've seen that uh, for decades. Well, we know it. They're, they're just like us. There's the, the guys who are like, we need to 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 march in the revolt. And there's there's a group that's like, we need to get in the the business section and and become part of their group. Well, I'm going to tell you that um, I was telling them yesterday that uh, black people are starting to end this mon. We're not a monolith. When we talk to y'all. And then when we get back in the room, we got to learn to start fighting. But I was like, oh, it's great to see that you exposed that so we can exploit that. Family business can only be spoken in the family. Dear Sheila O'Brien, shut the F up. We don't know you. Go back down state to wherever you came from and leave Kim Fox the heck alone. How about that? We are about sick and tired of you coming up out of here, coming from downstate, filing different motions Talk and different stuff. Bagging. Right, carpet bagging. Take your carpet bagging, O'Brien self, back on down to downstate, wherever you are, and leave Kim Fox alone. I'm going to tell y'all, y'all better stop this. Y'all are going to open up something you do not want to do. Leave Kim Fox alone. Sheila O'Brien, stop filing these papers. Come on, fam. Stop. You know it. what it is, man. It's what we haven't learned is that when the white group wants to, to get a black person, they are relentless and they become their enemy. Black people are, are just the opposite. They kind of like, when there's a white person, they don't feel like they're doing anything for black people. They just start to ignore them. White uh, people attack. And, and, and that's our problem. One more time. We so dang gone busy trying to be nice and, and ignore stuff. People keep hitting you in the head. You're like, oh, that didn't hurt. Ooh, that didn't hurt. Then tell you in the grave because your head done got knocked off. Look, be time out for this old peaceful BS. Like that's 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 the problem with our community right now. We don't have no self-discipline. We we don't we'll let we allow madness in our community and then we allow people outside of our community to be on top of that madness no time out for all of that craziness hey amen relent like right white folks black folks be like oh forgive them oh could you sit down and meet oh you brothers should you guys should. they be like hey man that's your enemy De look 48 laws of power it say destroy your enemy and destroy them completely unless you don't all right um <laughs> Uh, Secretary of State Jesse White is it uh, has been has set out to investigate Patricia Van Pelt over this marijuana uh, profiteering securities etc. So we'll have to check that out. And keep an eye on that. Oh. Democrats want Trump impeached, uh, but it seems like the calls are getting louder. Bears are back in business. OTA started. Uh, did you see the story that Mark Brown did about Perry Hutchinson? I, I tried to, but I couldn't open it yet. So, man, we got to get you a sometimes account, man. I think I will. I uh, that was a good story. I think it was. It, I think that it was called foreshadowing, right? I think people missed it as they saw it as a metaphor. But if you read in between the lines, there was a lot of foreshadowing. I told you about some other things that was going on, and I think people got a little quiet because you need to reread that article. I shared it on my page. Read it. Read it slow. Read it carefully and understand what probably happened. Hey, it's the Talk Chicago 1690. We'll be back after traffic. Live from the WBON newsroom. Oh yeah, that was, so I, that, if in literary context, initially that article was looked at as, um, I looked, initially I looked at that article as a metaphor. But it was after looking at that as a metaphor that I realized that it was actually some foreshadowing going on. And I remember I told you a while back some things were shaking. We're getting very close again to the date. Pay attention. I tell you. What did, what did Tyrion Lannister say? I drink. 
and I know things. <laughs> I drink, and I know things. Take a moment, y'all. Share the broadcast. Okay, on the city side, it don't say it's a meeting today. Uh-oh. You mean I wore all my good clothes for nothing? Let me <laughs> check that out myself. Okay, man, how did you get to the... I want to Let's see. Man, I, I, I sent something. It's kind of early. I'm going to do so we can log in set up an account. Oh, you want to set up an account? Yeah, I want to set that up. See, I feel like they gotta have a mean because how does she take care of any business if right. she don't have I mean, everything? Without, without the rules, there's there is no business. There's um, no committees, there's nothing. Okay, well we'll find out. What you mean, the email domain? Use Let WVON. Okay. So we should do WVON at. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Maybe this has something. Just, uh, do we have WVON at WVON.com? What you got? No, because you got to be able to sign into it. They're going to send you a password. So you can't okay, just put I up just a... Can't put nothing in. Right. Okay. So that's password. Why don't you just go to the server for right now and then sign in to Facebook. Go to www.facebook.com. Sign in as the, at the WV... Use your sign in for WVON. The WVON Facebook page. I know where I want to go. Here. No, man, you're right. It's not today. Crap. You on the city of Chicago website? Uh huh. Yeah. It's it's next Wednesday, the 29th. Let's go. The board meeting. Second and fourth Wednesday of each calendar month. So, okay, 29. Oh, see, no council meeting today, but the, there is a. Yeah, so I
I feel like that was what I was yesterday. You want to go back to search up there? Oh. Uh, That's where I'm at. Uh-uh. Oh, You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 1698. I'm, I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger, in the building. Todd, how you feeling, man? You, you set? Well, I'm disappointed, man. Why are you disappointed, man? We need it next week. <laughs> you mean you put your church clothes on? That's exactly and it ain't, how I feel. Oh, you put your church. You know what the worst is when you waste a good outfit? You know, you got your, you know, you. you I'm know. looking at my calendar trying to figure out some place I can go. <laughs> you know where you can go? <laughs> my man, uh, John Scott, told me you can head over to the um, Board of Education meeting. No, uh, the well, there's a Board of Education meeting, so, you know. Hey, John, man, it's got to be some work over there. I know some people need some help. You know, the brothers, you know, we come, we the brothers coming up with, a, with our own firm. We're going to be over there. We're going to be able to help solve all y'all problems or create them. <laughs> you know, so whichever you need. You know how they say how you can help us or you can hurt us. You know what? Did they have the big uh, Great America Day for CPS? I, I didn't get no. I, I'm trying to figure out because I want to go to Great America, man. All right, look. It's time for the social media question of the day, Todd. Uh, so this morning as I was doing my morning research, I came across an article in the Chicago Tribune and typical from a white woman. Her name was Heidi, Heidi Stevens. She said that Mayor Lightfoot should start Chicago's Green New Deal. Like she should jump in right away and that should be the thing she should jump right away. I was like, you know what? This is exactly how white folks think. It is blood all in the streets. We like, we're preparing for the bloody summer. And she like, I've got it by George. Let's have a Green New Deal. So we can protect the trees, save the grass, but watch the black people die. <laughs> and so it got me to ask it, you know, but I said I didn't have great expectations. Because what else, you know, white people do, white people going white. They're going white, right? Trees, flowers, plants, dogs, all that stuff. Forget the black people. Forget highest black unemployment in the country. Forget 40% of our black men are unemployed. Let's forget all that. Let's just get us a Green New Deal. But then I said, I can't expect for white people to speak up for us. So I said to myself, no. self, what can Lori Lightfoot do for black people in Chicago immediately? And I said, you know what? That white lady might have been on the sun. A Green New Deal. A Green New Deal, in my estimation, where the green 
stops going to the green team and starts coming to the black team. Equitably. So I'm okay with a Green New Deal if it's gonna get if we're gonna get our cut. But I want to know to the, from the WVON listening audience, give us a call, 312-374-8130. What can Lori Lightfoot do immediately for black people in Chicago? Immediately. Immediately. Ty, what you think she can do? What can she do immediately? Man, that's a tough one. You know the immediate thing kind of passed. Well, yeah, well, she did a, a, she did a, she did executive order. She did the Donald Trump on executive order. No more automatic privilege. The immediate thing could have been, you know, like make Michelle Harris the finance chairman, but or someone like Mich her. But that's passed already. Right? So uh, mm, I can't think of anything like immediate. You can't think of nothing to me. I think she could issue an executive order. Right now, re-examining all construction contracts. Re-examining all city contracts to ensure and that they must all be now reviewed by the office. Of, what's, the, what's the equity? What's, what's Candace Moore's job? To look at through the lens of racial equity? Yeah. What's her job? Chief, oh, Chief Equity Officer. I think that she should. So this, maybe that's what you did. Then. This is what you do. And, and I'm going to tell you, I got a plan for Carrie Austin, too. But if, if Lori Lightfoot were to go on the press, sit down like she had all those white people around her the other day when she signed the executive order ending automatic privilege or so, so we... Could you imagine if she held a press conference... With all the black business owners, maybe the new black business owners, because the old ones, you know, they be always at the press conference and then we don't get nothing. But could you imagine if Lori Lightfoot said, starting today, I am putting every city contract under review. And every city contract that is under review that has not met their black, I can't speak for everybody else. Can't speak for everybody else. Met their black business requirement, and I know they say it ain't now, because they can't say black. But if they don't have a minimum of 12%, what, what, 12%, what's our, no, 30% black participation. All right. Because we're 30% of the population. I say 29, I'll give you, I'll give you. If all of the contracts do not have 29%, then they are now under review. Can, I, can you imagine what would happen? Can you imagine that water sinking it and watching the rats try to come to the top and swim? If she did something like that, can you imagine what the lobbying efforts would be like to stop it? Like, could you imagine if, if she went through and said, I want full disclosure by racial category of every city contract and if black folks ain't got they 30 percent we're gonna have to re-examine your business and the amount of business that you do at the city am i am i crazy no you're not crazy i think that's that's a good idea i mean executive order i want to see that cha i want to see that cta i demand that every city agency that i am under control provide me with a list of every single contract that they have and I want you to be able to come in and defend your, your participation. Understanding that we got, and we got 30% of 29. I'm going to give you 29. No? Even though I would have taken uh, Walter Panetta as the floor leader. I, I mean, she should have taken Walter. Let me say this. But she, it would be hard for her to take. I think he's going to be the default floor leader. I'm going to tell you why I think he's going to be the default floor leader because, I mean, can you imagine Gil? I, Gil is my man, but when it's time to get all the black people to be like, come on, let's go. They're going to be like, man, you ain't from around these parts. <laughs> I like you all. But. No, no, because he's the whip. And the whip, as Thomas told us, speaks for the leader. So when he comes, they know that the mayor's talking. So he's going to have to get. You know how that gets. I know how it gets.
But I'm going to tell you, if I know some of these people, they'll be like, you don't talk for me. Black people ain't letting. First of all, we done been in line for a long time. We not finna let no. I'm just telling you. I think that it's going to be a floor leader that, and it's going to be a floor boss. already left the barn. I got you. I think it's still going to be a floor boss. It's like, you can lead, but you know like the leader behind the throne? Well, in a way, the budget uh, chairman, who you know has been black, is been the person who all the other black people go to when they, they need something. But that's when the white people went to her because that's when they needed to get the $55 million to take away NTA to go build Navy Pier. Look, look we'll talk about it all when we come back to Talk Chicago 1690. Mays Jackson, Todd Stroger. I'm such a petty, but a petty guy. <laughs> I'm so petty. I mean, how many votes can Pat Dow get you, though? Like, real talk. They're going to respect Pat Dow as the budget person. Do you think? Yeah, that, that, that position has always been the position uh, behind the finance person there that people are like, okay, I, I need to, to listen when you speak. And so she uh, becomes a de facto floor leader whip for the Black Caucus. And we'll see how that works out. And, you know, she is someone who is a, is a true ally of uh, of the mayor, I mean, you know, from the get go, it wasn't like she was on the other side, and that's what all the other black people, all the other black all, all them out. I don't know if all those, but the majority of them went over to Pregnant because she's somebody who they already deal with, and they have been getting some things out of her. So I think that's why they they stuck with her. They thought it was the safer thing to do. And they hadn't they weren't on board in the beginning with uh, Mayor Lightfoot, so you know. They already knew that they were at near the back of the line. But like I let me say with the speaker, it didn't matter who won with the speaker. The speaker, <laughs> the speaker always wins. Right. <laughs> yeah. He never loses. He's still the speaker. So you have to deal with him. There's only one person who, who didn't feel that way. And that's your boy. I'm just kidding. Rod Bogoyevich. He's the only one who was like, no, I don't care if you're a speaker. I don't have to deal with it. And you see how that worked out. So the aldermen are kind of the black aldermen. I see them as behind the eight ball. You know, their voice, to be honest with you, Anthony Bill was right. And for the black people, he was right. If they organized themselves, they would have more power. There was a role to uh, power is, I put one in there. In the system itself. And since they didn't organize themselves, that power is, is lost among the group. They're doing some high tech behind it. If we don't get it, I'm going to do it um, doing Al Sharpton's, what you call it? But like I always say, you know, what they what the black cats really need. I have a is they need a game plan right now. I mean, I think the mayor, the mayor seems to, to sound like she is amenable to ideas. They need to, to get one together. There it is. There it is. There it is. But this that would be a collaboration with the elected officials. Uh, when I mean elect officials, I mean the state reps and senators, the aldermen and businessmen, and maybe even the business groups like the Urban League. So now, have a if true you plan put in, I'm gonna put in for stuff some kind of site okay. on the south okay. or west but, side that everybody can come and they come right to the right mayor with. And I push the enter button. You can't get the app because we got to get an account. 
You are tuned into the Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Ty Stroger, and we are asking the social media question of the day. What can Mayor Lori Lightfoot do for Black Chicago immediately? Ty, you think the time for Black people getting power out of Lori Lightfoot is over? Oh no, no. I mean, there's always time to to uh, go back and and make a friend. I think uh, I think I told you that story about Jane Byrne and Marty Overman. Marty Overman was with her in the beginning, and he said he went for an early morning meeting that they always had, and Ed Verdoliak and Ed Burke were walking out. So it, that just shows that uh, you might be out in the beginning, but that doesn't mean that you can't make an ally as the time goes on. So I want to know, what can Mayor Lori Lightfoot do for black people? I, the, right immediately. The thing that, I, that made me ask this question is, I saw in the Chicago Tribune today that white, uh, one of the white writers was saying, Mayor Lightfoot needs to have a Chicago Green New Deal right now. And all I could think of was, we got this summer coming up, we got all these issues, and she talked about safe hugging a tree. Oh yeah, I mean the black people, the black uh, elected officials, and the businessmen should be talking about, we are gonna present a economic uh, engine idea to the mayor. That should be what we are talking about. Now, and who are, like, so, y'all, give me a call. 312-374, women, 374-8130. What can Mayor Lori Lightfoot do for black people immediately? I'm going to go to the phone lines. Let's start with line one. Let's go to Ron. Ron, you're on the Talk Chicago 1690. Hey, good morning, Mayor. Good morning, Ron. Good morning, Ron. Good morning, I know they always uh, do a celebration for uh, Black Music Month. I would really like if they probably honored uh, uh, Insane Wayne Fields for that. Just want to throw that out uh, real quick. Thank what you. she could do, yeah, what she could um, do for me is get rid of Eddie Job. See, she can just do that right away. And the reason why, guys, is because the unsolved murders, that, that stops right at him. So you're not doing your job. It does, in particular, the unsound murders in the black community. So what do we need him for? So that would work with me. Just get rid of Eddie Johnson. Have a good day. All right, I'll Ron. Stay to think about that on um, Wayne Fields. Have a good day. Mm, you know, we're going to always think about Wayne Fields, but yes, thank sir. you, Ron. Um, so he's, Ron says get rid of Eddie Johnson. Well, y'all, I don't know if he shot anybody, but okay. Um, I think that if it's been murders, we... <sighs> I'm not going to defend Eddie Johnson right now, but what I am going to say is, um, I really want to get us out of the out of the economic. I mean, I want to, you know, mine is I always want to know about the economics. Let me go to to Ziff. Ziff, you want to talk Chicago? Two days in a row, we got Ziff. Hey man, Perry gonna get mad, bro. Mm -hmm. You can't be the president of the Perry fan club. Mama D, Mama D through the history, so I gotta spell out where I can fit it there, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, gentlemen. Here's what I would like to throw on here, and I would like to, uh, Todd, I want you to listen real well on this because I'm going to put some pressure on him with the, what's in it for the black people. Mm -hmm. And I'm very serious, Mays, about this. Mays, we need a department, and Todd, you a lawyer, you can show us how to do this policy change because that's what Mays is into. Mays, we need a department of reap entry. We don't need ex felons going to the Department of Human Services over here, over there, over there, over here, over there, Social Security and all that. We need ex felons to get the same opportunities everybody else do for jobs. As you say, what's in it for the black people? There, she needs to say something about where. Because let me tell you, now, here, thank you, Lord. I'm going to leave on this. Guess who? And Todd, I came home in 78. Guess who can go over and stop the game banging and the killing overnight? Because guess whose sons? Those are out there with the guns. Jeff's son is out there with the guns. It's the ex felons kids that's got the guns. What do you think they learned the game thing from? Thanks, Let's Ziff. work on this, mate. All right, I'm down with it. You know what? I think we got to... I do think we have to... Um, I'm sorry. I think we do have to go to the start dealing with our ex felon community. And I think we got to stop having them being pimped. Right? Because I think one of the things that's happening right now is as we deal with our ex felon community, they're becoming tools of other people to 
You know what I mean? Like, I feel like the ex-felon community is being used right now. Let me go to Frank. Frank, you're on the top of Chicago, 1690. Good morning, Brother Mays. Good morning, Brother Todd. Good morning, Frank. Good morning. Hey, listen, my brother. The best way we learn to get something to get things done for black people, the easiest way, the quickest way, you've got to include others. I would love to see her mandate, make it by law to every homeowner and every apartment building owner in Chicago install a basic video surveillance system that will survey the front and the back of their house. The reason why we get this um, so much violence in our, in our neighborhoods and everything because they know there's a high possibility of chance that they're going to get away with it, okay? And they see the home surveillance system up everywhere and make it, if, if we check on you randomly and it's not operating today or yesterday, $1,000 fine, okay? They know they're going to get away with but see with the home vector system you don't need no snitches we got you on film it's a crime shame we just got one shot a pair of code the next house that even pick her up they follow them two guys in Sweden here all the way back to grandma's house that's what we need and that's what to do I love mama Dick and keep any justice because he had already recommended someone get fired a police officer get fired the police chief usually lean in a direction that the mayor who appointed him wants to go in now may life with us in and you're gonna see a good change in Eddie Johnson. I say keep him and observe it and watch the change in him. Thank you, my two brothers. Thank you, bro. All right, last one, real quick. Uh, Tamiko, you got to do it really quickly. I'm sorry, we're running out of time. Tamiko, President of Western for the Black People. Good morning, sis. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I have one of many that start with calling for amendments to all these PLAs on every city agency so they can include nine union contracting for black contractors. So, therefore, all contracting and union contract PLAs is not about construction. Let's start with that. That's professional contracting, too, that's also get PLAs written into twilight with the workforce. Let's start there. All right, that's another good one. You know what, we got to start having some conversations, y'all. This is Talk of Chicago 1690. When we come back, we're going to continue this conversation. We're going to talk about that city council meeting and what can Mayor Lightfoot expect. We'll be back. The Talk of Chicago and the Voice Thank of the Nation. 1690 WVON, Berwyn, Chicago. Cloudy skies, okay. damp roads after some heavy rains overnight. However, the National Weather Service says today we're turning warm and windy as temperatures climb into the low 80s. Take a moment, share the broadcast, y'all. Take a moment, share the broadcast. Shar the broadcast, shar the broadcast, baby. You know what we could have done is just casted this bad boy. I bet you could cast it. From your, uh, yeah. From my phone. That's what I was thinking. I know for Samsung it'd be pretty easy. Oh, let me try this. Man, it's like we almost here. Bang! Damn! This is ridiculous. It's like, I want to be here. I think once we get it set up, I bet you I could. What the? I wonder how could I cast it? Let me see. Let's go to Facebook. Let's go here. Let's go to Facebook. Sorry, guys. Hey, y'all, take a moment to share the broadcast. I don't have a cast option. All right, this is driving me nuts, but now it's because it's right here, I gotta get it working. Here, Todd. Okay. Todd, 
talk to the peoples. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, yes. I, um, uh, my wife and daughter stayed home yesterday. Yeah, she is. I think. Uh, uh -huh. like, That's terrible. Responding to our text. Oh my God, I usually have like a hundred and some shares before the end that of the show. That just played Dr. Kildare yesterday. Yeah, not a very good Dr. Kildare, but Dr. Kildare. Got the, I hit click, uh, get Adobe. Oh, okay. The love we had yeah. stays yeah, so on my... Yeah, the technical stuff in the background here. I think, uh, We are trying to update ourselves all the time on the May Jackson show. Moving into the new decade, which is coming up pretty quick. I'm trying to find the rules for the city of Chicago. City Council rules. You know, none of these websites are all that easy. Hey, Dolores Robinson. City Council. See, I just want to be able to see the comments. Okay, there you go. But I want to be able to see this video. Rules of order. Let me find out what the rules of order is at. No people of color, no diversity of wording about black people. The City Council Legislative Reference Bureau should be under control, supervision, and direction of the President Pro Tem. Tem 4. I didn't know that. Yeah, you know, reading well, the rules. Yeah, I can see that. I'm trying to now right. see if I can get. Yeah, we. If I can get this flash player, oh, we Lord. like in perfect space. It's funny when you look at the rules and the priority of business. There's only like ten things, and the first one is just the quorum call. That would be interesting, uh, Maze. What? Is if the council, if it was actually within the council's uh, power to decide who was the presiding officer, in the rules of order and procedure, it says rule one, the mayor shall be presiding officer of the council, uh, officer of the council. So does that mean that rule one said the body shall determine who will be the presiding officer of the uh -huh. council? They could do it? Yep. That's interesting. So they are powerful, more powerful than they think, I bet. You set the rules. The body sets the rules for the day and for the, how they're organized. Yeah, but but as a, the president of the county board by, I guess, statute is the chairperson. I'm just wondering, is that in there somewhere? I'd have to ask one of those municipal lawyers. Words I'm saying, I'm for it. Okay, go back to the maze, Jackson.
you want I want you to I want you to I want you to, I want to make it good to you baby Ooh. You tell me tell me oh, oh, oh tell me if you want me to moving down a little and scoot it over. There you go. You are tuned into the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host Todd Stroger in the building, y'all. And we are discussing, you know, we was just asking the social media question of the day. What can Mayor Lori Lightfoot do for Black Chicago immediately? But Todd, I want to talk about politics right now. And I want to talk about the politics of the city council. As you notice, you got all dressed up for a city council all today. Up and nowhere to go. All dressed up and nowhere to go. Um, but city council seems like it's shaping up to be, um, well, let me back up. The Sun Times said that apparently um, one alderman has said that Lori Lightfoot has the votes to reorganize the city council. You were just asking me about that. But it seems like some people are not very happy about this reorganization um but it seems like very few or that there are others that are, they're, they're being quiet about it i don't hear a lot of noise i don't hear a lot of noise either a lot of people complaining or talking about i mean i think that mayor lightfoot actually was pretty smart in how she organized her um her council in my estimation she did a, a nice mix of she needs a nice, she got a nice mix of old and new. Yes. She shook up the top spots, but then she didn't necessarily cut herself to the bone where she wouldn't be able to have allies and supporters on the old side. But apparently, uh, there is a leader of the opposition emerging. And I think the leader of the opposition is Alderman Ray Lopez. You know, Ray, Ray Lopez claimed that she disrespected the alderman uh and she says she's gonna pay a price during when she has tough votes now it seems to me that alderman ray lopez who just now recently completed his first term right um yeah was in a runoff is talking cash smack <laughs> he is talking cash smack for a person that is not in a very strong position. Now this guy also left the Latino caucus, right? So now, now, but he is a member of the LGBT caucus and a member of the progressive caucus. Right. But does he have enough stick to be going up against Mayor Lightfoot who seemed to have so much uh, cachet? I'm gonna tell you, people who were at that, people who were at the swearing in said that Mayor Lightfoot basically punked a lot of the aldermen when she got to the discussion because the crowd was so uproariously loud and rambunctious and ready and for pro, change pro Lightfoot. and pro-Lightfoot that they were obligated. And while they didn't want to stand... They made us stand. But I was watching, rewatching. Alderman Moore was right in the camera. Boy, he was making some faces. <laughs> Good Lord. I was like, Alderman, Alderman Moore, you snapping. He was like, what you say? Speak up. I couldn't hear that again. Speak up, right? Right? He was putting his, he was doing the Hulk Hogan. <laughs> finger behind the ear, like, and what? Right? But, Todd, does it make sense for Mayor Lightfoot to have opposition so early 
And will that opposition pay off? Um, what, what, what makes a Ray Lopez jump out here like this and go hard at a mayor that's, that won 75% of the vote? What does Ray Lopez have to lose? I mean, that's the, that's the first question. Uh, he doesn't have any real, you know, cachet. He, like you said, he's only been there four years. And I don't think, uh, I don't think Mayor Emanuel had uh, given him anything that uh, gave him any power within the, the organization. So, hey, he's got nothing to lose saying I'm going to be a, a, against you. Um, I guess some people say that what he has to lose is in four years, his people may not back him because the mayor is well loved, but who knows what will happen in four years. So let me ask you a question. When you go up against them. So first of all, I want to understand, Todd, why wouldn't the black aldermen or why wouldn't the city council organize themselves? Like, why wouldn't that? I'm not tripping on it. I want you to help me understand why in a scenario like this, wouldn't the city council organize itself and take power and reassume power in a vacuum like this? This is uh, same soup warmed over. Uh, I, I don't remember. Yeah, well, I do. The only time I remember where the city council decided to act uh, within the uh, their power was when Harold Washington was mayor, and people were you know up in arms over it. Uh, and it is, and it's kind of funny because even with guys like uh, uh, Dick uh, uh, Simpson, who liked the mayor you know, kind of running roughshod over people at the moment. That's the exact same thing he didn't like when he was in Albany. Um, so it's really more about who is in the seat and if they're your ally and friend. And when they're your friend, you want them to be all powerful and people to follow their lead. But when they're not, you want the city council to push harder and, and be, uh, uh, an opposition to the mayor in a lot of instances. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we are just looking at at Illinois history. This Repeating itself. How we do it. Yes. <laughs> so, essentially, Ray Lopez, so is Ray Lopez make himself a leader by default by continuing to antagonize the new mayor from the outset? Got to need some people behind him, though. If you are a voice of one, or even if, uh, let's say Anthony Bill decides that, that he is upset uh, at it. not having a committee and chairmanship after he you know, has his seniority, and he decides to uh, join in with Ray Lopez, I mean, they can't be the gang of two. Of two right? that's, not, that's not a gang. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a couple. <laughs> a couple. Oh, now nah, you know they don't. You know I don't know if Alderman Bill wants to be coupled. <laughs> yeah, let me stop. I think they both are already coupled. But okay. uh, oh, well, let me ask a question. Um, Todd, do you think that Alderman Lopez's ward will suffer? because of his opposition to Mayor Lightfoot? You know, I always thought of this. I thought, like, the way it used to work is if you were opposition to the mayor, your words started to go down, 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 down. Right? Why? Because if, if you can't get your garbage picked up, if you can't get your services, if you can't provide the services to your constituents, well, then they start looking at the guy in three years that's like, hey, I can get your tree trimmed. Hey, I can get this garbage. Look at this terrible war. Do you think that Alderman Lopez is being selfish and not looking out for the best interests of his constituents? I think Alderman Lopez's ward probably has some economic issues. Mm -hmm. And in that, uh, he will get the basic services. And as we well know, uh, the uh, economic uh, distress wards Generally, don't vote at high numbers. So the alderman tries to hold on to the few people who really come out, so he can always he or she can be victorious. So I doubt if she could do anything to the ward 
Uh, Anything word. worse to the ward? <laughs> right. It is the 15th ward, right? Right. It's like, if you've been to the 15th ward, it's, 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 it's in a shambles as it is. Um, you know, well, when we talk, when we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about this. Because, you know, I was thinking a lot about Carrie Austin. Alderman Carrie Austin, who is no longer the budget chair. She was replaced by Pat Dow. But she yeah. became chairman of the contract compliance committee which could be you know, which could be tremendously be powerful yes. tremendously powerful we're going to talk about it when we come back because i think that when you when life hands you lemonade lemons i think alderman austin has a chance to make lemonade and become a champion of what's in it for the black people we'll talk about it all when we come back after traffic and the weather right I got a bet. The best text, I, the best answer I got on that one was, or they stick Lopez in the remap. Stick it to him in the remap. Oh, that's right. This is, uh, <laughs> right. I guess right. Stick it to him in the remap, timing, and then. Timing wise, it's good to be. Right, right. Stick it to his ass in the remap, and then when he tries to, then all the people who ain't the core, you push his core out. Right. You put his core out, and then you just have all the mad active people who ain't getting nothing that. Yeah, yeah, the lace is absolutely correct. It, it, it just might be the wrong time to be on the uh, the uh, war with the mayor with the map coming up. Mm, what year is this? Yeah, I mean, like if this was 2000, uh, 2013, the map had already been drawn out. Maybe he could make all the noise he wanted, but yeah, there's always that problem of you being drawn into a, a new area. <laughs> That's what they did. It took them three maps to get Ken Duncan. No, two. The first map, they mapped him. They took out a big chunk. And then this last map, he only had one precinct in, in 27. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that they was kept his cool. mom's precinct. Oh, that's what but, uh, <laughs> that was really shady. Uh, yeah, I mean, literally, probably, what would happen if this is going to be you know, real war is they would draw Ray Lopez in a, a, a map with someone right next to him who is a uh, Latino, <laughs> who's Latino, and, and and seems to have a lot going for him. I don't know. I don't know who that might be. And he would have to run against that person. Or they could draw him in next to, to his next door neighbor in 16, where it's, uh, you know, majority black, and all of a sudden he doesn't have a, a Hispanic base. Uh, then what's he going to do? So, yeah. And I don't think there's going to be too much pushback on whatever the map is going to be. You know, 30 years ago, there was a fight between the so-called independents and the so-called regulars about which map they were going to have. And the independence map drew out some of the aldermen. Uh, the guys who they were upset with, they drew out, like my alderman, Alderman Dixon. She lived at the edge of the ward, so they just moved the land over a block. <laughs> and if their map had, had succeeded, she would have she would have just moved. But you know, that's that's a burden on you. They did that to uh, Tom Murphy, and it cost him eighteen million dollars, and he still won. Uh, eighteen million dollars. They had eighteen million dollar court case to make the eighteen. They fought in the eighteenth ward to make it a super majority black ward. Oh, yes, yes. Right? That's right? That's right. And John kicked everybody's ass on that. And then, so then when they couldn't beat him that way, then they remapped -mur re Murphy out of his ward. That's when your boy Ed McCann was like, the only way that Tom Murphy is going to stay the alderman of the 18th ward is if he goes to the Bahamas and gets a long suntan. <laughs> we used to... Uh, we used to take glory in kicking Ed McCann's ass. Uh, Every pretty, election site. Uh, he talked a lot of shit. Let me tell you, when I, I ran against Paul, years, but, uh, when he uh, <laughs> when he came, so when I ran, when when I was against uh, Paul Stewart, he was like, they came in like they was finna do something. Man, a lot of ass women went around. 
Mm. It was like, this ain't the eighth ward over here, homie. I know y'all, I know y'all rock with the Stroger team, but Stroger ain't running she's over here. Hey, that was Anthony. He lived there. Yeah, we whooped his ass too. Whooped his ass. Whooped his ass. He used to come in like he used to come in like a gang member. I used to be like, hey man, ain't you like 75? He did belong to a gang. Okay. The Stroger mob. Around Did we get here? Nobody's supposed to be here. I'm trying to mm -hmm. Heart said no, 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 no. Nobody's gonna be here. Nobody's supposed to be here. You are tuned in to the Talk of Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. And Todd, we are talking about city council. Um, let me say a couple things. Um, first, in this Ray Lopez decided that he is going to pick up the mantle and go against Lori Lightfoot. Um, I said that his ward could suffer from a lack of services. But I think that this is probably not the key time um, to be going to war with the mayor in the fact that there is a remap coming. Now, Todd, explain to people the importance of a remap and what could happen to Alderman Lopez if he finds himself on the opposite side of the mayor and with no allies. What a remap process could do to him. Well, um, we were talking about how his ward is not, uh, is, uh, not that prosperous in the sense of a lot of business and, and people with a lot of money living there. Um, and he, he's surrounded by uh, areas of poverty and other wars. He could easily, I'm guessing, be drawn into another war and find himself running against an incumbent who has their base still there. And then that's what we call in the business trouble. <laughs> Essentially, that's what happened with Stephanie Coleman. Remember Joanne Thompson? So there was Joanne Thompson and Tony Folks and they merged their wards and right. made the two black women fight. And then they created the space for Ray Lopez. Correct. Ray Lopez may find himself again without with a weakened Burke, right? Because Lopez was protected and created by Burke as a kind of like a barrier to start creating a shield with the Latino. And it gave him like his next Gary Chico, right? A Latino that was like that was more aligned with him than the Latino community. So he could always have, like, Lopez is a great Latino name, right? It you is. put Lopez up against Jackson, Johnson, O'Malley, or whatever, Lopez wins. And so right. you get that. And if he, if you know, and if you act like you're Ed Burke, most of the time, you know, when you do. So Ray Lopez is in a precarious position. But one of our very astute commenters suggested that Lopez and uh, Bill are in the majority on the concept of automatic privilege. However, what I've come to recognize is that um, the aldermanic privilege debate, I think Mayor Lightfoot was very strategic in doing it, right? She did not say no more zoning, You that the zoning changes don't occur, mm -hmm. which are like, the reason that people care about driveways and signs and stuff like that is because they really ain't got that much going on. Right. Right? If you got major construction, if you got buildings and you got driveway sign permits and block club permits, block club permits and all those things are great tools to know what's going on in your ward. Now, if you're a good alderman, right, people are going to come like real good aldermen, they give something to every block club, right? So say if you are in the 27th ward, they may, for every block club, you may get an appearance from the Jesse White Tumblers, right? Because you are part of that organization. Right. That is a benefit of being part of the organization. And so I'm gonna tell you that people will walk in the office of the 27th ward for their block clubs 
regardless of whether they can get the permit from downtown because the aldermen and the committeemen provide additional services and resources for their community. Now, if you don't have a lot going on, you want the block club permit, block club party permit, so you can make the people come in and kiss your ring a little bit. Or not kiss your ring, but let them know, you know you wouldn't be having this party if it weren't for me, <laughs> right? As, and so it's ruling by fear as compared to by love, right? Like, as soon as the block clubs go up in, in certain places, like I remember there would be certain wards, I think even in 27 now, they still give you a case of pop, right? So you have a block club, you come in, and when you have your block club, you get a Jesse White appearance and a, and a block, and a, and a case, case of pop. pop. Mm -hmm. That helps kick your, your event off. But I think it's going to require those people that have used the office and who have not built organizations, who have not built community service reps, who have not engaged their people, it's going to require them to do some additional work. And so instead of, like in the 48 Laws of Power, it says make people come to you no matter what, in this case, now you're going to have to come to them. So I don't know if the... The, I, I'm with you on the aldermanic privilege, but I think that she was pretty slick in how she did it. Yeah, she, she, but, but she, she did uh, state that it only was for certain things. Right. You know? Like we have it in, in, uh, in 21. You keep saying that. I be when are you going to say eight, man? <laughs> Go ahead. Because eight runs like a, 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 a well-tuned watch already. Right. But in 21, uh, one of the areas wanted to have an event in the park and the park asked the alderman what, it, what he thought about it. And the issue came up basically is like, you know, there has been some issues and there's a lot of people and what kind of security are you going to have? And they were like, oh, we're going to use our own people for security. And they're like, well, that didn't work last time. <laughs> we need something different. And the alderman said, I don't think it's a good idea. And they listened to him. I mean, there are certain times when the alderman's opinion uh, it's probably going to be based on some facts that you that he probably should have some kind of say. So I think that maybe what they should do is they should go fill out their block club, send it in, and then the alderman's office should get a copy of every block club that's happening, block club party that's happening, that filled out a report. Now, if there's something there, if there's a red flag, then they should be able to call. But I'm gonna tell right. you that those block club that those block clubs let you know where to go, so you can go visit. You know, I, we, if you got a real organization, you tell you, you get that list of block clubs and you tell the precinct captains, go visit. Oh, yes. Go knock on the door. You make sure. Matter of fact, the, the precinct captain, if you had a real organization, they'd be telling you about the block clubs before you, before the person. Oh, before they come in. Right. Yes. They be like, they, matter of fact, if you got a real precinct captain, they'll they part, the they right, because they part of the block, they part of the block club. That's if right. you're a real. But you know what? That's We got away from that. It's a long time. Todd, when we come back, I'm going to talk about Alderman Carrie Austin. Um, she is now, you know, people, the way this news has been played out, it's like it, they made it a demotion. I'm going to tell you that this position that Carrie Austin has could truly make her the people's champ. It could really, really redefine, um, well, let me not, it could expand her legacy beyond the 34th Ward. And I'm going to tell you, contract compliance. We got a police contract coming up. We got a labor contract. We got the teachers union contract. And we got all these city contracts. And what's in it for the black people? Man, could you imagine a black contract compliance chair saying, I want to see every, teaming up with Lori, or telling Lori, we want to see every contract, and we want to do a study, not just a study, but we want to make a plan. This is Top Chicago 1690. We'll be back. Live from a w Hey, man, could you imagine? Now you got Carrie Austin as a bulldog. Y'all yeah. can say what y'all want to say, but... Like, if you didn't MF her, right, and she was the person that was looking at the police contract and being like, and we was there to provide her support, oh, she'll go in the room and be like, oh, hell no. Working for you. What? Did this, um... No, uh-uh. It didn't because I don't know how to. I'm going to Google it because I think you might have to um, Samsung Adobe Flash. I'll look at it later. It's too much to do right now. Hey y'all, um, Stalker Boy, Cointel Pro, has taken time out to try and friend all of my friends. 
Like, who has turned? You know, like, you are like a stalk, like a little broad. Like, that stuff chicks do. Like, you really went through my friends list and, and asked everybody on my friends list to be a friend? Like, what? That's, that's like scorned woman. Like, who does that? And can I just say, y'all really got to stop allowing it's funny to me I, you know I got all these people talking about man can you broker something can you broker something just cause you started just cause you new to the game we've been in this for 20 years just cause you you own some you some new to the piece well, I've been working for some years years and years and years and years and it's funny to me because in the world of social media people people forget that there was a world before social media. And so they want to be like, well, because I just found out about this, well, I think that you got to be, no, nah, sorry, nope, nope, no, sorry. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes you got to. From our discussion, people did ask me about, about him and uh, why does he keep why do we still have him well it was more of they knew of him and they were like yeah I think uh, I think Mace was right on <laughs> he, he hasn't been helpful uh, it, it's more it's like anti than anything pro right you've been in the game for 20 years literally 20 years you have nothing to show you know how that part with Jay-Z be like, damn, I'm going to be a failure surrounded by drugs, thugs, and drug paraphernalia. Failure. So if the only thing you can put on the table right now is somebody else got to put it up, psh, you goofball. Goofball. You've done nothing. It's like the reason you don't hear nobody saying nothing is because don't nobody want to hear your mouth. But the fact of the matter is we all know you a snake. Everybody knows it, just nobody will say it. Like, no, like, do you know how many inboxes and how many phone calls and people's like, man, what you described happened to me. I'm telling y'all, cut the cancer. Cut the cancer. It cut the cancer out. Stalker boy. So if you got a friend request from somebody over the last couple days that you don't know, and then you go to their page and their whole page, is, like, do y'all, you know what, dude? Remind, did y'all see that movie Selena? You know how like she, the girl who killed Selena, oh, that's was movie. was was like cut pictures out and looked and was sneaking around taking pictures. It's like. That really is like some, some stalker chick shit to do. No disrespect to the chicks. Why is it ironic that I quote Sean Carter, boy? You know I'm Jay-Z to the world blow up. L-Dub, what's up, doggy? No, we're not going to ignore it. You're going to... See, when you keep ignoring it, it's like... There are some people that feel like ignoring it is a test of your weakness. What needs to happen is y'all need to stop ignoring it and pretend like it's not happening. And be like, you fake. You bogus. Like, it needs to be universal. It's like, nobody has disagreed except for mugs who ain't been here. That's why I keep telling you. The, smart, the thing is to trick people who don't know. You don't see nobody lining up. Who's who's on the team? You don't see nobody coming to defend. Y'all just want to be social. That's that aggregate. That's that. Okay, Salim said I can't start calling it agrarian. But that's that. That's that. We going to keep on turning the other cheek stuff. And y'all keep getting y'all stuff blown up. Everything we do gets blown up. Because same person. Can I tell you every single beef that I've had with anybody in this activist space has the genesis has been that mug. Real talk. Real talk.
fuck, dude. Y'all need to be like, I mean, what's happened? And let me tell you what happened. What happened was, what I told was the truth, and it made so much sense to so many people that now you got people backtracking, trying to talk about now we should talk. Fuck you mean talk when you went to go go to Facebook Live? Now y'all want to sit down and talk. You want to sit down and talk, you walk right past me. Walk right past me. I was sitting there. You walk right past me. You don't want to talk, but now people see what you do. They see it. They saw it live and in color. And then here's the funny part. Now y'all want to be on a PR tour? You on a PR tour. The reason they on a PR tour trying to get is trying to redeem themselves because they know I was on some bullshit. You trying to redeem yourself because you know what you did was bogus and everybody saw it. And it's like, you got six people who just came home saying, yeah, tell them. And then everybody else like, wait, they fight every single day for us. But go ahead, keep getting sent off. But let me just be clear. <laughs> it ain't just me. I just said it out loud. It's always some nigga that's watching, watching nigga be ignorant and then tell you to take the higher path. Why don't you go check your boy? Don't tell me to take no higher path. Goof ass. You are tuned into the Top Chicago 1698. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Check this out, Todd. If you would like to say a tribute, pay a tribute to Wayne Fields, go to WVON.com and leave a memory or a message to his family. I want to send a big shout out to all the COINTELPRO agents out listening, tuning in, watching. Hey, y'all, we got to cut the COINTELPRO cancer out of Chicago. There is a disruption of the black unity. A deliberate disruption of the black unity in Chicago. You know what? I was wondering, who you think is going to be the first person to protest Mayor Life? You mean outside of the council? Yeah, outside of the council. Like, who you think going to be like, who you think is going to be the first Negro to call themselves holding not accountable? To what? Who you think? I don't know. You, well, I think this. I think that somebody is going to try and make themselves Facebook famous. By protesting Mayor Lightfoot before, they're going to protest Mayor Lightfoot before she even have a chance to get anything started. And I just think, Ty, we got to, we, we, we got to do better. All right, let me, let me go here. Todd, Alderman Kerry Austin is positioning herself, is, is in the position right now, in my estimation, to be one of the most influential aldermen, even more influential than she was in the budget committee. Now, when I say even more influential than she was in the budget committee, she may not, I don't know what her budget is gonna be and I don't know how many employees she's gonna have, but she better, I need to get her connected. Too. Well, we need one of those lawyers to be somebody like a Michelle Flagg. Somebody who will pull, take a look at every city contract, go right to that line where it says, what is your DBE plan? And say, what's in it for the black people? See, could you imagine if, again, we said Lori Lightfoot could hold all of these, um, could hold, could make an executive order demanding to look at these contracts. But could you imagine if Alderman Austin, in her position, decided that she was going to hold hearings to show us what exactly has been happening with our contracts, could you imagine if she held open hearings during the negotiation of the police board contract? Hmm. Could you imagine her having holding open hearings and holding the labor unions accountable? By saying, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we sign any of these, what's in it for the black people? Now, y'all laughing at me. But last week on Monday when I received my award, you know who was the first person to say what's in it for the black people? Who? Alderman Kerry Austin. Now, 
I'm going to also tell y'all that she told y'all she was a gangster. Y'all tried to beat her up. Things have changed a little bit. But can I tell you what? You need a gangster to deal with gangsters. Who's the biggest gang in Chicago? CPD. Who got the biggest muscles in Chicago? Labor. Oh, I was going to say Otis. Oh, <laughs> see, you still scared <laughs> Otis. Uh, all right, this is the Maze Jackson Show. We got two days till Otis gets here. Y'all stop licking the glass. But Todd, so here's my thing. Could we potentially meet with Alderman Austin, talk to her about the plan, and, before, and, and work with her on that plan of saying that she wants to see, and every contract going forth before, since then, she calls for every major contract here. Think about it. She could call contract hearings on Sterling Bay, on Midwest Related, and say, since now they stopped these contracts and y'all gave up $6 billion, I want to see the list of all the black contracts that got paid. I want to list all the contractors that's getting up. Now, I, mean, I think you're right. The, that, that position could be very powerful, uh, at least powerful for us in, in what we would call equity. And then think about it, because then if anybody could protest that, who, who pushes back against her when she says, I want to see the black, con the black components of the contract? I hear what y'all talking about. Show me all the DBE numbers and she go look for the black ones. But here's the key. Here's the key. We have to get to a point where we don't shoot the people who can get us the answers that we need. Does that make sense? Because right now, as soon as y'all like, oh, she can't, she ain't, she won't, she. I'm suggesting, how about we have a conversation? Can we, can we move forward, black people? Like, here's the deal. You may not like your you may not like someone else's alder. You it may be very easy for you to body slam them, but look, we own, we just got here. They just got sworn in. When is there the reset that says, okay, now we looking at it, we doing a reassessment. Obviously, rolling with the mayor ain't always gonna be get you what you got. Right. So now you got to come on to your peepers. But it uh, I can't remember the press now. You know, uh, he said, make me do it. And sometimes you have to uh, get the hammer, uh, show the world, and then it is pushed upon. You can't always expect the leader to just do it out of their great grace. And it may be something that their base may not want. But if you can push from another space, they, they may be forced to do it. See, I think right now, at this place and this time, I think, you know what, I want you to go backwards, and I want you to find that quote. And here's what I want black folks to do. I want you to think about it from the perspective of if we stopped looking at each other as enemies mm -hmm. and started looking at each other as allies in different places. Boy, you speak right out of my, uh, my hymnal. What, if page, we, what page is that? That is page one. <laughs> there you go. That is song number one. Can we start looking at each other not as enemies from different lands? Maybe we need to be reacquainted. Maybe we need to start opening up the lines of communication. Look, y'all, I looked at that press conference. I watched as 20 black aldermen got sworn in, and I said to myself, Dag Nabbit, and I did say Dag Nabbit too. Mm -hmm. We can win here. If we can put down, we can get rid of COINTELPRO because I ain't through with that. Because we already know where the, when the beef starts, we know where the beef is going to come from. But can we, can we, can the black business community and the black streets and the black morning shows and the black teachers and can we connect the dots again and take our city? Take our rightful place. Hey, man, we need some gangsters in the world. This is Chicago. This is a gangster town. We running around here acting like sheep. And you act like sheep, you will get sheared. 
Tired of my crazy man. Have I lost it? You're crazy like a fox. <laughs> I mean, you're speaking uh, the, the truth. Is, is one thing we have to be smart. And to be smart means that we have to work together. And if we don't work together, what well, they say, uh, if you don't hang together, you will hang separate. Hey, man, you remember, I'm going to tell y'all. This whole concept of the black, we not a monolith. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe we've diffused our power instead of consolidated it. Right. And as we get diffused, and remember how when you watch those National Geographics, it's always somebody that want to go just taste the other grass. And what's waiting in the other grass? A lion. The lion. <laughs> now we got to get rid of hyenas out of our own crew. That's right. So Cointel Pro's got to go. But, y'all, I'm going to tell y'all. It's about time we get some political gangsterism about us and take our space in Chicago. South Chicago will be back. May is held awareness month. Back. One in three Americans. There you go. You have camera, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, man, that has been my biggest gripe. Oh, is <laughs> people trying to pull uh, other people down and and you know we're all trying to to, to help people. One thing I've I've learned is that one person literally just can't help everybody. They can, they can only help a, a, a certain amount of people at a time. There's got to be other people helping a certain amount of people. But if those two separate people are fighting each other and trying to tear each other down, you end up helping fewer people if uh, you can help anybody. Man, we can't, we, we can't afford that. It's not like we've got enough where we can try to tear down the other guy who's trying to do something. And uh, it's good to have somebody making noise in the room. I mean, I've got nothing against uh, Ray Lopez or, or Anthony Beal if they can make some uh, legitimate gripes that bring change. And, you know, that they would serve a great purpose for the majority of uh, the people. You gotta have somebody who says, wait a minute, what about what's going on over here? What about us? And then everybody who cares about that needs to work together to get certain things done. That was the, the glory of Harold Washington. He got everybody together. It wasn't black people who were regular Democrats and black people who were independent Democrats. It was black people. And and uh, Latinos, even though the Latinos were different, it was the independent Latinos and the regular Latinos were working on the other side. But with the black people, they all were working in that same space. Uh, and you know that's how things started to move. You know, all of a sudden you got some momentum. You got black people heading places that you never uh, had seen before, and. And these are black people that ties to the community. You know, my, my major gripe of when the white persons would put people in places of power where they could make change, they tended to be people who you didn't know would come from another state, who just been here, been here a year. They had no ties to anybody here, which is, is what power likes. Uh, so therefore, there was, they didn't really, they weren't able to to help the black base and expand it because they didn't have any ties to it. They couldn't call and say, hey man, this job would be perfect for you. And if they called somebody, it would be somebody in Pennsylvania. So that is just another way where they have been able to keep us out of the loop when it comes to having the ability to push projects, money, positions into our neighborhoods. Every black face isn't connected. Uh, and that's uh, unfortunate, but they are connected to the person who, who put them there first. That's another reason why the, the breakdown of that whole priest and captain organization thing, uh, everything has uh, unintended uh, consequences. And what that consequence for us was now it made it harder for, let's say, the aldermen to suggest things, or people, I should say, not things, people, to the to the mayor. 
say, well, you know, this guy would be a great fit for this. This guy would be a great fit for this. This lady could, could do this job. You lose all that because you don't have those people that you actually know. What a gangster pop, a gangster pop. The, the worst thing in the world is, is having somebody you recommend and you don't really know them and they turn out to be a louse. Right. Because it got me on the run. Waiting on the outcome. We have my most of the cases. Peach name Peachy. Peachina. Mr. Bunk Foxino, like Bugsy Siegel, and do it all legal. You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co got my co-host Ty Stroger. Todd, I was talking about the power that we can take out of the city council. Um man. Well it appears as as uh, I well, I think there's one thing we're sure of that this mayor will be a different model than any of the other mayors we've seen. Probably the closest thing would be uh, Mayor Washington, but without a united front against them. Um, you know, I like to tell the story of, of listening to the anniversary of Mayor Washington, and uh, the reporter goes out the north side, and she goes to a bar in a white neighborhood, she says, this is the anniversary of Mayor Washington's death. The guy says, oh, yeah, you know, before you became mayor, we couldn't really get any streets uh, resurfaced, and, you know, we didn't get a lot of city services. And then she said, would you vote for him today if he was still alive? And he said, no. <laughs> 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 but that's how divided people were, uh, I'll say it, on racial lines. Um, things have changed. Uh, there is still, I mean, I'll, I'll say it, there's still a, a division where what we like to call institutional racism, where people see black people and they see us in a certain light without knowing us. Uh, they may think of you, okay, well, you may be human now, but you're a dangerous human. Right. Um, Todd, I, I just think that. So here's me. I feel like everybody right now, with the exception of COINTELPRO, because he's been at it for 40 years, or 20 years, should have a reset. Like, look, y'all. You just, you're like, you're, whether you liked them or not, those aldermen got reelected. Whether we liked it or not, Lori Lightfoot got elected. Whether you liked it or not, Melissa Conyers Irvin got elected. Where, uh, and when you do the math, the math class right now, a math class where right now we look at and we count everything that we got politically, and we say, okay, Instead of MFing everybody that's got a slot, how do we give them their task for the next four years out of their slot? Right. And we check back with you yearly to be like, where are you with your slot? People have been saying a, a report card. Maybe we should sit down and think about all the offices that we got. Think about what is success from those offices and whether it's a, a thermometer or whether it's a scorecard. We start trying to score and then we look at this and say, "How this is where we started, this is where we ended. But it seems to me that we're going to stay stuck on everyone's past. Like, you gotta wonder, who is the person that, who are the people that work to ensure that there is no connection? I feel like we're working to break the bonds, sometimes instead of putting them together. And it seems like every time there's some momentum and people are like, oh, we got to win. Here comes same, same, same. All right, let's go to the phone lines. Karen, you on Talk Chicago 1690. Hey, I hope this is not a COINTEL Pro call, by the way. This is Karen. Hey, my sister Karen. Good morning. Good morning, Kings and all listening queens. I agree with you. We need to re-communicate. We need to reconnect because we all got a pass. Get rid of the Cortel Pro 
Everybody start confronting so that we can conquer and let's take back what's ours. Because guess what? Nobody else has the magic that we have. We just don't know we have magic. Let's move on. We can do this. We're going to do this. And just like Mama D giving, giving history, see, that's our problem. We don't know our history. We don't respect those that have been here before us that's really got something to say. Mama D has something to say, and I commend you for allowing her to say it in the mornings. So, yes, we can do this. We're going to do this. Love you, and have a wonderful day. Thank you, my Thank sister you. Karen. Let's go to Rick. Rick, you on the Talk Chicago 1690. Rick, you on the Talk Chicago 1690. Yeah, uh, we need a think tank. Uh, where we can uh, get policy takers, papers, where we can give these politicians each office. This is what you need to do for the total plan. An office of treasurers, one for the treasurer's office, one for each alderman, things like that. So we have a total plan. So get together as the polls. You know, if it was a, a political season, it would be a platform. But in between elections, you need a think tank. So that's my comment. I'm going to tell you, I wrote a plan called the Rebuilding of the Black Political Infrastructure. And it, it talked about having a black think tank, a black PAC, and a black political operation. So let me tell you, the black PAC component of it is here. What's in it for the black people? Shout out to everybody who uh, reached out, who came out for the What's in it for the black people uh, fundraiser. We raised almost $10,000 on our first go round. So that was tremendous to see black folks put their money where their mouth was. The second component of, of the plan to rebuild the black infrastructure really revolved around building a political apparatus. That is 50 wards, 50, 50 wards, 30 townships, 50 people, four hours. That is in process. The black think tank, we're trying to figure out who is on it because our black mindsets Got to be pro-black. Look, y'all, it's Talk Chicago 1690. When we come back, we're going to change it up a little bit. We are going to talk about Hustle and Soul, a TV show. We're going to talk to Chef Lawrence, that nabbit, Lawrence Page of Hustle and Soul. Y'all, we're going to talk about food and romance and, man, how, how, how you can get in real trouble messing around in the food business. We'll talk about it all when we come back. The Talk of Chicago and the Voice. What's the name of the talk? Hustle and Soul. Take a moment, share the broadcast, baby. Take a moment, shut up broadcast, baby. Shut up broadcast, baby. There you go, Todd. You got the camera. Mm -hmm. Oh, everybody got to go get in the car. Eight o'clock, people. Them numbers just dropped. <laughs> uh -huh, everybody got to get in the car. They got to get to the car. Got to get to work before 9 or 8.30 or whatever. Yep, that's the way it is. Let's see. My wife. Just, Danger! Just drop the little one. Danger! Go ahead, dude. Hmm. I need to head to New York anyway. Get tired on TV, yo. You need to head to New York. What you doing in New York? Stop the pink teacup, man. Uh -huh. It's in Brooklyn. Brooklyn! I'm going to ask him, did Jay-Z ever eat the... What up, Gina B? What up, Denise Russell? What up, Brian Smith? Brian, shout out. I will send you money if you want to send me a link. Shout out to Alpha and Omega 121. I got you, uh, but I got you. Um, what up? What um? Shout out to all the Prince Hall Masons out there. What up, So Mode It Be? What up, Denise Russell? What up, Curtis Kojo Morrow? 
I remember one time I called Charlie Morrow, uh, Charles Morrow. I said, hello, Charlie. My name ain't no damn Charlie. He went off. Oh, yeah, you gotta be careful giving people nicknames. I give everybody a nickname. Everybody. Not, I mean, I understand that, but I, I understand how that doesn't work. Right. Especially nicknames that are not uh, used that much in the app. Hey, Mr. Charlie. Hey, <laughs> Mr. Charlie. What up, Val Free? I'm just saying. Anybody does COINTEL Pro Business is just, y'all gonna have to pick. It's just gonna have to be a choice. Sorry. 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 I just gotta ask y'all though, have you ever seen any outcomes? Right? 20 years. Have you ever seen any outcomes from COINTEL Pro? Have you ever seen anything positive that has been an outcome of what COINTEL Pro has done, Todd, in your years? No, I, I can't. I can't actually say that. Like, don't aren't you known? The Bible says you're known by the fruit you bear. If you think about the fruit that COINTEL bear, COINTEL Pro bears. Man, I've been hearing people say, like, man. The funniest thing about that pro that broadcast, though, the other night was how many people were like, oh, my God, that happened to me. He did that to you? That's like, I wasn't lying. And it's like, that's why he on a media tour now. And that's why his boy on a media tour now trying to repair their image. Because I think, again, you be jumping in with the wrong people. The next thing you find out, dude is goofy. Dude done crossed everybody. The only people trying to set up a meeting is the people who wasn't on, who ain't been on the scene. Like if you've been on the scene longer than five years, right? Like actually participating, then you already know. Don't fuck with dude. Nobody talks about it because it's just be like, I'm glad he went away. It's all you new people who are not cause not for no diss, cause you're young, right? I'm 48 years old. So think about being doing this, dealing with this shit for 20 years. That means since I was 28, this nigga been doing the same thing. Excuse me, this dude been doing the same thing. And so, no, ain't nobody starting over. Ain't nobody trying to have a new sit down. You think everybody in the city of Chicago ain't sat down with that clown at some point? That's why it's always new people. You don't see no old people saying, stand up. Nobody that is established in the marketplace is like, let me defend him. All the people that are doing this five years and younger. Real talk. If you want, the only people talking about trying to put something together with that dude is anybody who got started during the Laquan McDonald era. If you were before the Laquan McDonald era, you already know, don't fuck with dude. And the Laquan McDonald era rejuvenated him because it brought him back into the circle because everybody was like we all got to be here together and then all the whole new crop that came about was like man this dude is smart he knows stuff and so he would be telling you stuff which in some cases made sense but the whole point was to build up trust so that he could body slam somebody else it's like that jailhouse stuff there's no pro there's no Pro benefit that, that really comes from anything that I've seen them do. That, right. That's the problem. Nothing. And it always winds up with someone else in trouble and him off to the next one. About hustle and soul. <laughs> it's a, a, a reality show. Yeah, know. I know. I do. I do. And he's messing with both of the... Um, he's messing with the lady downstate in the Atlanta chick while he's messing with the cook in, in the north, too. Well, one of them's actually his girlfriend. Of course. Right. I tend not to watch reality shows. I don't watch reality shows at all. As a matter of fact, I take pride in the fact that I don't. The only reality show I watch, and I don't even watch that anymore, is just Naked and Afraid. Naked and Afraid. Todd, that sounds like porn. What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm certain this is probably a name like that. I'm trying to think what would be a name like that. Naked and what? Do I have to read? Do I have a read? Do I have a health awareness read? Yeah, on the way out. On the way out. So I'm saying, I'm just telling you. 
and everything I said, the only thing anybody could say was, well, he did get six people jobs. Nobody. There's nobody that can tell you anything positive about outcomes. Nobody. I'm not suggesting he's the only problem, but I'm going to keep telling you, don't come on here defending him because he's my problem right now, and this is my broadcast. So that's my problem, and on my broadcast, that's what I'm talking about. And until we hold that accountable, then I ain't really got nothing else. Sorry. Sorry. Book him. And y'all allow this madness to go on. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? <laughs> like, if somebody always want to tell me what I shouldn't be doing. Telling me how I feel like y'all let these motherfuckers just get away with everything. I be getting my ass kicked for black people. And then everybody want to sit around and be like, oh, we're just going to just ignore that. No. Yeah, I want to be like the. You look so good to me. Addicted mm. to you. Mm mm. Mm mm to you. Six jobs, six hundred thousand dollars from jumping on tables. And no jobs, no work to show for it. And y'all want to follow him right off the cliff. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. And y'all know how we do at the top of the hour. Gotta say what's up to the WVON morning show team. What's up to my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd, you all dressed up and nowhere to go. I think you can still go. You can, John Scott said, come on down to the Board of Education meeting. And you know what? We gonna come down there. You know what, John? We gonna come down there. But you know if Todd come down there, he gonna be looking at them contracts, talk about what's in it for the black people. He might not say it like that, though. He might say, so, uh, John, what's going on with those contracts? What does the African-American participation look like? And I'm going to be like, what he really mean to say is, what's in it for the black people? All right. Now I got to say what's up to Annette Flournoy in the newsroom, as well as the Wonder Twins, Sonia Escobar and Sonia Tompkins. You know what, y'all? This is our short day. You know, on Wednesdays, I got to get out of here early. 824 for the Urban Business Roundtable download. But you know, you all we always keep it kind of heavy. We talk a lot of politics. But 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 there's more to life than politics. That's right. There's and food. There is food. <laughs> and Lord have mercy, let me tell you about food. I love food. It tastes so good. It's like I eat food every day. <laughs> but I love food the most. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you, one of the things about food is that food is also, romance re revolves around food. Todd, I used to work in restaurants. I'm going to tell you, I used to work in restaurants. And it used to be all type of just rendezvous and love triangles and people you know, you be cooking, you be making food, and you're there late, and the next thing you know, you're leaning over each other, the smells, the aromas, everything is cracking, and then it happens. You might find yourself falling in love with your work counterpart in the world of restaurants. Let me tell you, boy, I used to see all types of stuff in the, in the walk-in coolers when I was older, when I was younger. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you worked at Burger King and McDonald's at the same time. You had a, a chance to see a lot. Of stuff. Now, I'm going to tell you, that, I'm going to tell you, that fast food protest yesterday was going on at McDonald's about the sexual harassment. I was going to say, like, you know, I'm not the most, but I was sitting there like, when I worked at McDonald's, 
All, all of that was true. No, that all of it was true. But you know, we I, I stepped up my game, man. You know, I worked in some restaurants too, some actual restaurants. And speaking of restaurants, here to talk to us today is Chef Lawrence Page. Now, I don't know if you know Chef Lawrence Page, but he is the owner behind the iconic pink teacup. Now, the pop iconic pink teacup has been around since 1954. And you know where it's at, Ty? It's in Brooklawn, so you know I gotta ask. Is this one of Jay-Z's favorite eating places? Cause you know me, you know how I do. Uh, but he has got a, he has got a reality show called on WeTV uh, called Hustle and Soul, and the kitchen is getting hotter. WVON family, welcome Chef Lawrence Page to the WVON Morning Show. Chef Page, how you feeling this morning, my brother? I'm good. How are you? Thank you for having me. Man, we're glad to have you here. So talk, talk to me about this pink teacup. It's iconic. 1954. How do you stay in business since 1954, especially in a gentrifying Brooklyn? And you look pretty young, too. You just, you just got to have good food, man. <laughs> hey, you know what? There you go. That, that he, he kept that real simple. Teacup, the, the pink teacup started in Manhattan in 1954. That's where it was born at, in the West Village. And, uh, you know, you had Jimi Hendrix watching, washing dishes there, and Basquiat, the artist, you know, he worked there with so many different celebrities constantly coming through there as well, you know? Man. It was an institution that was around for a lot of jazz players, so they, they just sold grits and chicken all day. And, you know, I bought, you know, I took it over probably about, like, 14 years ago. Took it over. Uh, it was closing, so I wanted to keep the institution alive, so I took it over and uh, brought it to the new world that we live in social media and everything else that comes with it and uh i love you know stepped up my game and became the best chef in the country when it comes to it you know all right so uh, there you have there you have it now tell me what kind of food y'all serve at the pink tea club my brother oh we do everything we do everything from uh you know shrimp tacos to uh catfish and grits the holy trinity shrimp and grits saute with onions and peppers and base down uh we do pretty much you know pretty anything that's southern i do it you know even down to frog legs i do it Oh, dang. We're going to have to check that out. I don't ever think of that. You know, I go to Brooklyn, man. You go to New York, they don't really make good fried chicken in New York. Give me like... No, no <laughs> New York don't know a damn thing about fried chicken. <laughs> I was, okay, I'm glad it's not me. It's not just you, right? It's not just me. All right, so Chef Lawrence, uh, uh, Chef Page, talk to me about this new show. You've got Hustle and Soul. What what can we expect from it? Hustle and Soul is uh, it's pretty much a show about my life as, you know, coming from the hood and just growing up and, and, and hustling trying to figure out how to, you know, get this restaurant popping and try to bring real people into the restaurant and see if they can add something to my life. But, you know, it'd be, it's, it's, it's gotten difficult over the last, you know, few years. Uh, right now, you know, it's the third year that Hustle & Soul has been out. And uh, it's getting a lot of legs because a lot of people catching on to it and they're saying they saw, I did not know that was a reality show that was so real and not scripted. And I think that's the part that America is like really watching this show nonstop, especially black America. I mean, they really love the show. And because, you know, you, you know, you, you talk about, you know, me and my brother, he went to prison and I, I went straight to the kitchen. And they're the same age. So we went two different routes and we came back together at the end. So it's, it's kind of a great success story. But try, but now, you know, I'm constantly managing people's lives and trying to keep the bullshit out the restaurant. Uh and people, what they go to, and they bring it right to the restaurant. Yeah. So I kind of grew up at the same time, you know. I, I wasn't the greatest guy coming up, you know. You take a young guy like me, and then you put him in the business, and you make him rich and power. You know, he's gonna act a damn fool. But you know, as time got, you know, as time went on, I got a little bit smarter, I got a little bit wiser. And but uh, are you from uh, are you from New York? Other people lies. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm from Brooklyn. Oh, okay. Uh, Brooklyn. All right. Uh, I'm originally from Alabama. Okay. So look, look. So let me ask you this. Talk to me about. So this is is this a, this is not a cooking show. This is a show about your life. Now you're opening up multiple restaurants. Are you open? I heard you yeah, opening up in different spaces. Yeah, we got one in Miami Beach. So when you come to South Beach, you got to stop on Washington Avenue, check out the Pig Tea Cup, and then we have one in Atlanta, Georgia. So you got to check that one out. You know, so. So you so got this, this this show. This show is basically. It's really about. You know, like teaching people how to really, you know, run their lives, you know, and you know, like manage their lives when they come to work. Like leave it at leave, leave your life outside. But when you come to work, try not to bring your life to work. 
So, so you know, we're in, a, we're in a stage right now where people won't even get off their phones constantly when they go to work. From corporate America to blue collar workers, everybody's going to stay on their phones. So we're at that we're at that stage now. So hustle and so I'm constantly battling everybody, even down to my child's mother. Like, look, that's not the way things are supposed to be ran in the world. And she says, well, I'm a, I'm a millennium and you older, so don't tell me what the hell to do. We're going to do it this way. <laughs> now, Chef, now, Chef, but I've been hearing some rumors, man. I've been hearing some rumors, man, that you might be dipping in two kitchens. Now, no, we're all going to cookie jar. You know, you got a sweet tooth. So, you but you got. You, but so hold on, chef. Now, now help me understand this. So you got a uh, you. I hear that you might be kicking it with one one person in one state and one in another state. How does that work for the business, brother? See, for me, you got to watch the show and you'll understand. I can't explain it over the, uh, you know, <laughs> over the show, over the radio. So you got to really watch the show on Thursday night. Come on tomorrow night at Thursday at 10 p.m. And then you'll see the madness, you know, the method to my madness and why I do what I do. Because why I do what I do made me very successful. And a lot of people look at it like, I don't understand this. How is this possible? Well, the bank account got a lot bigger. You know what I mean? so, you, so you just have to understand, like most people do it, they do it sloppy, they're wild, they don't know what they're doing. It's all about, you know, ego, it's all about power. For me, it's all about growth, and it's all about seeing people get what they need to get out of life just so they can take care of their families. So I think you definitely have to watch Hustle and Soul, and I think that's what makes the show so real, and that's what makes me not just a chef out here cooking that's good, it makes me a human being. So when you watch me, like, okay, Chef LP, that, that dude is real. Like, he's going to talk some real things. He's going to get smacked by his baby mama. You, you follow what I'm saying? He's going to kiss her the next minute. You know what I mean? He's going to make sure the food is popping. He's going to go through problems that everybody go through. And I think to put that out there to see how I actually manage it and how, you know, without, without being a Muslim, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I think it's, I, I think it's oh, amazing. Muslim or Mormon. <laughs> a Muslim or a Mormon. <laughs> hey, Chef, real quick before you go, because, you know, back in the day when I was in the game, like, I'm not in the game. I'm happily married. Got a beautiful, lovely wife. Uh -huh. But, you know, when I was really trying to be a player, I used to you get on the... Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Turned in the clock. Can't even Whoop. spell it. Now. Can't even spell it. Don't even get me in that. But my part of my game was cooking. And I think I won my wife with my amazing ribeye steak that I made in the dead of winter. Talk to me about the role of cook on the grill outside in the bar barbecue in the dead of snow in Chicago. Talk to me about the role of food and romance. And have you ever used your 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 cooking skills to come up? You damn right I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean I mean it, it's important because they say the way a uh, way to a person hard is food to be honest with you. And you know and food really changes us and makes us feel different. When you walk into a restaurant you haven't eaten all day and you're ready for that Juicy burger, that amazing catfish, whatever you want, or the, or the, or the chicken and grits, or, uh, you know, buttermilk pancakes. You want that flavor. You don't want to be like, damn, they off today. You mean you, you, you know? So, so I hit it every time, and I think that changes a person because a lot of people say, how the hell does all these women love this dude? You know, I mean, they come in the restaurant, but my thing is that I cook for them. I oh. make sure that that food is hitting. I make sure that that feeling that they get. You know, it, it's for me, it's. For me, it's like food porn. You know what I mean? Like sex and food is it go, goes together. You know what I mean? It's, it's a feeling you get. You know what I mean? When you when you making love, it's a feeling, and when you eat, you like making love to that food. It becomes a, you know a really sensational inside, and I think that's what what that's what people are really attracted to, and I, that's what the fuck that's what the hell I do well. All right, that is Chef Lawrence Page. He's the owner of Brooklyn's legendary teacup soul food restaurant. Check him out tomorrow night. He's on We TV. His show, third season, Hustle and Soul. And the kitchen is getting hotter. Hey, brother, we gonna, I'm coming to check you out when I come to Brooklyn or, or Atlanta. We'll talk to you later. It's the Top of Chicago 1690 Chef Lawrence Page. Is he still there? Is he gone? All right. Thank you, my brother. All right, y'all. Um, you know, he was talking about making love to the food and stuff. I was like, that sounds like, like a... A yeast infection or something late in the afternoon. Like, ew. You don't have to worry about the yeast infection, yeah. my brother. <laughs> hey, y'all. It's the time of Chicago 1690. That was, uh, so look, y'all, because I see y'all acting up. Like, what was that? Y'all you know, know I've got to, that? what did I just walk into? Let me tell you all. We trying to get worldwide.
We trying to be world renowned. Look, TV. And we have to recognize black excellence. Black excellence. But I think the sisters was a little upset with him. Because, you know, he's talking about like he's a, he well, got watch, sister watch wives. Show. We'll see how it works out. Hey, I don't watch reality, but. I do like watch cooking I'm, shows. I was talking to the sisters. Oh, the sisters, you know what y'all, how many of y'all gonna check that show out? It's gonna be funny. All right, Todd. Hey, man. I still, I, I still have not gotten to this segment and I want to get to it. So we might have to do it tomorrow. But you know, I'm still a little upset about the black people that's tripping on uh, Oprah Winfrey for not giving, uh, paying for every like does the fact that yes this, how do you spend somebody else's money and she is in her life has, has donated so much how do you 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 point a finger and say why did you do what he did todd that's some classic negro stuff can i tell you what that's another one of them cointel pro moments where people try to judge you on they want to count your money and i just think that you can't judge people on what they do with their money Right. right. It's like it's my money. And what obligation do people have with their own money to do for the community? And when's enough? What's enough? There's the question. When's enough and, and when is it not enough? You know, I used to think about people would always count and look at it and say, man, May's got this. Look at him. He got that cop. Look at him. He driving this. He spending this money. He go eat this. I have heard the same thing. You got it. Why don't you buy it? Right. And it's like, but then they, don't, then they always want to count my money, but nobody ever wants to go to work with me. Nobody ever wants to stay up late at night. Nobody wants to get up early in the morning, but they want to tell me what I need to do with my money. I think we got to really start. I, I just really feel like, with the exception of COINTELPRO, the black community needs a reset. Like, we got four years. We, got, we can run the whole entire gamut. The whole entire gamut. We can run the tables if we can if we can get out of our own way. So I'm gonna tell you, right. for everybody, and I know it's a lot of y'all that are upset with the aldermen, etc. But it's like their wards reelected them. The people who live by them, who are responsible for them, reelected them. So now we got four years. Like I tell y'all, do we sit out four years or do we figure out how we get the most? bang for our buck over these next four years and if people don't get us what we want then we get take it out on them hey y'all it's the wvon morning show for net floor annoying the newsroom for net floor annoying the newsroom i gotta let you know that may is health awareness month now did you know that as much as possible you should eat raw fruits and vegetables because raw unpeeled fruits and vegetables provide greater benefits when you when peeled and or cooked this healthy tip is brought to you by Resurrection University. Mm -hmm. See what res you can do for you. Start your career now at Resurrection University. That's right. Annette wanted me to remind y'all that. So did Miss Sonia Escobar and Sonia Tompkins, the Wonder Twins. And Todd was like, if you don't tell people to stop eating unpeeled fruits and vegetables, I'm going to have your, your hide, Maze. So <laughs> Todd wanted you to remember that too. Now me, I'm just the host of the WVON Morning Show. And if you don't like it, you can still tell them. May said, we out of here. Peace. Live from the WVON Newsroom, here's our news now. We're going to start this day with a jack. Captain Pete. Call me Captain Pete. See, it, what happened, y'all, is Everybody needs dude thought that I was crazy, and then too many people said, you ain't lying. And now, they on an apology tour trying to figure out how quickly can they talk to other people and... Look, y'all. Cut the cancer. Cut the cancer out. We don't need no chemotherapy. We need to cut the cancer out. I want, to pay, I want y'all to pay attention to the, all the people that are suggesting that, that we meet are all the people that we haven't seen on the scene for the last 20 years. Not saying y'all wasn't working. Just saying that in the level of high profile stuff, it's like everybody wants to take the high road because that's what Michelle Obama said. Michelle Obama is looking at Chicago like, what the hell happened? All right, y'all? Yeah, I'm petty. I can be. But you know, they said, Jay said, um, 
Giant should never, you should never. Hold on. Jay said, don't argue with fools because people from a distance can't tell the difference, right? <laughs> Which I agree with sometimes, but sometimes people, the fool need to know you can get be a fool too, right? Like I think people prey on socially awkward situations and people who are willing to step outside of the comfort zone of a social situation and blow up the norms have an advantage. Why? It's like the American Revolution. When the British wanted to fight by the rules of the Queens of Mark, Duke, you know, and the colonists were fighting behind trees and not standing in line. And it's like, sometimes it's not fight fire with fire. You gotta show a clown Who's the ringmaster? You did? Take a moment, share the broadcast. Think about it though. I want you to think about the person that takes the time to friend all my friends, to try and get them to be his friend. Like, did y'all see single white female? Did anybody see single white female? It's like, dude is like a single white female. Like, he be sitting around like, I'm gonna get him this time, aha! You know, like, he sit around in his house being like, I'm going to show maids. I'm going to make flyers. Oh, I'm going to get them this time. Fucking goofy. Running around here. I'm going to tell y'all, though. It's like, thank you for all the calls, all the offers. <laughs> Take a moment, share the broadcast. running around here. Did you get more than six views today? Right? You, you, like, the only reason, you only significant when you say my name, fool. Like, the only reason anybody checks your Facebook page is to see what you gotta say about me. They could care less about you. Like, you're insignificant. Like, you're played out. Like, everybody knows. true 100 percent 100 100 percent lame old 